People First Language, Wikipedia article audio. People First Language is a type of linguistic prescription in English to avoid perceived and subconscious dehumanization when discussing people with a health issue or disabilities. It is a type of disability etiquette but can be applied to any group which is defined by a condition rather than as a people. Rather than using a label or an adjective to define individuals, People First Language puts the person before the diagnosis and describes what the person has, not what the person is, for example, as being diagnosed with an illness or disorder. Critics point out that separating the person from the trait implies that the trait is inherently bad or less than, and thus dehumanizes people with disabilities. Definition History Rationale Usage Guidelines Criticism See also People First Language is a type of linguistic prescription in English. It aims to avoid perceived and subconscious dehumanization when discussing people with disabilities and is sometimes referred to as a type of disability etiquette. People first language can also be applied to any group that is defined by a condition rather than as a people, for example, those that are homeless rather than the homeless. Rather than using labels to define individuals with a health issue, it is more appropriate to use terminology, which describes individuals as being diagnosed with an illness or disorder. People first language puts the person before the diagnosis and describes what the person has not what the person is. The basic idea is to use a sentence structure that names the person first and the condition second, for example, people with disabilities rather than disabled people or disabled, in order to emphasize that they are people first. Because it is a common practice in English to place an adjective before a noun, the adjective might be replaced with a relative clause, e.g., from an asthmatic person to a person who has asthma. Furthermore, the use of to be is deprecated in favor of using to have. By using such a sentence structure, the speaker articulates the idea of a disability as a secondary attribute not a characteristic of a person's identity. The term People First Language first appeared in 1988 as recommended by advocacy groups in the United States. The usage has been widely adopted by speech-language pathologists and researchers, with person who stutters replacing stutterer although it is believed that People First Language originated in the mental health community. Its origin dates back to the Denver Principles, which states, We condemn attempts to label us as victims, a term which implies defeat, and we are only occasionally patients, a term which implies passivity, helplessness, and dependence upon the care of others. We are people with AIDS. Use has been recommended in other increasingly common chronic conditions such as asthma and diabetes. Non-profit organizations, such as the Obesity Action Coalition have expanded advocacy for people first language to obesity. As of 2017, five U.S. medical societies had pledged for it, and use it in their communications, the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, the Obesity Society, American Society of Bariatric Physicians, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon. The most common alternative to person-first language is usually called identity-first language, as it places the identifying condition before the personal term. For example, while someone who prefers person-first language might ask to be called a person with autism, someone who prefers identity-first language would ask to be called an autistic person. There is no common term for use of identifying conditions as nouns, 
but it is not usually preferred apart from select communities, such as dwarfs. Others have proposed person-centered language, which, instead of being a replacement linguistic rule, promotes prioritizing the preferences of those who are being referred to and argues for greater nuance in the language used to describe people and groups of people. The Sapir-Whorf hypothesis is the basis for ideologically motivated linguistic prescriptivism. The hypothesis states that language use significantly shapes perceptions of the world and forms ideological preconceptions. In people-first language, preconceptions judged to be negative arise from placing the name of the condition before the term person or people, such as white person or Jewish people. Proponents of people-first language argue that this places an undue focus on the condition which distracts from the humanity of the members of the community of people with the condition. In a 2008 publication about an experiment on teens' perception of people with disabilities, scientists gathered evidence to prove why people-first language, or word order, matters. The scientists divided teenagers from a summer camp into two groups, one group was asked questions using the term people with epilepsy and the other group was asked using the term epileptics. They asked the teenagers questions such as do you think that people with epilepsy slash epileptics have more difficulties at school? And do you have prejudice toward people with epilepsy slash epileptics? The study showed that the teenagers had a higher stigma perception on the stigma scale of epilepsy when it came to epileptics, as opposed to people with epilepsy. Some U.S. organizations like the United Spinal Association have published disability etiquette guides, which prescribe people-first language. The 2007 For Dummies Guide to Etiquette prescribed people-first language. As of 2017, the rules of people-first language have become normative in U.S. governmental institutions on the federal and on state levels in the Heath Department's Developmental Disabilities Councils e.g. Michigan, West Virginia, Idaho, Missouri, Georgia, or Texas. As of 2017 it has been a requirement in AMA Manual of Style for Academic Journals. Critics have objected that people-first language is awkward, repetitive, and makes for tiresome writing and reading. See Edwin Vaughn, a sociologist and longtime activist for people who are blind, argues that since in common usage positive pronouns usually precede nouns, the awkwardness of the preferred language focuses on the disability in a new and potentially negative way. According to Vaughn, it only serves to focus on disability in an ungainly new way and calls attention to a person as having some type of marred identity in terms of Irving Goffman's theory of identity. In 1993, the National Federation of the Blind adopted a resolution condemning people-first language. The resolution dismissed the notion that the word person must invariably precede the word blind to emphasize the fact that a blind person is first and foremost a person as totally unacceptable and pernicious and resulting in the exact opposite of its purported aim, since it is overly defensive, implies shame instead of true equality, and portrays the blind as touchy and belligerent. In deaf culture, person-first language has long been rejected. Instead, deaf culture uses deaf-first language since being culturally deaf is a source of positive identity and pride. Correct terms to use for this group would be deaf person or hard-of-hearing person. The phrase hearing impaired is not acceptable to most deaf or hard-of-hearing people because it emphasizes what they cannot do. Autism activist Jim Sinclair rejects person-first language, on the grounds that saying person with autism suggests that autism can be separated from the person. Other advocacy groups and organizations such as Autism Speaks, 
the ARC and disability is natural support using people first language. However, identity first language is preferred by many autistic people and organizations run by them. One of those organizations, the Autistic Self Advocacy Network, has this to say on the issue. In the autism community, many self-advocates and their allies prefer terminology such as autistic, autistic person, or autistic individual because we understand autism as an inherent part of an individual's identity, it is impossible to affirm the value and worth of an autistic person without recognizing his or her identity as an autistic person. Referring to me as a person with autism, or an individual with ASD demeans who I am because it denies who I am, when we say person with autism, we say that it is unfortunate and an accident that a person is autistic. We affirm that the person has value and worth, and that autism is entirely separate from what gives him or her value and worth. In fact, we are saying that autism is detrimental to value and worth as a person, which is why we separate the condition with the word with or has. Ultimately, what we are saying when we say person with autism is that the person would be better off if not autistic, and that it would have been better if he or she had been born typical. Political Correctness <laughs>